Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Liars record, Mess. Whoa! That's a great looking record! Yeah, it, it, it is a really cool record. Beautiful! That's actually really interesting, it is, uh, it is blue. Blue, man. Oh, it's a better Yep, it is a good record. Experimental Music Outfit Liars has just dropped their seventh full-length LP. P. And they're a band that's kind of hard to put into words, or at least a, a couple of words. They've been creating really abstract, adventurous rock, electronic, and dance punk music since their formation in the early 2000s. And their sound has been in a constant state of evolution ever since their inception. And even though it's been a little while since I've all out loved, loved, a Liars record, maybe not since 2006's Drums Not Dead, it has still been interesting watching the band's progression from one record to another because of how dedicated they are to changing from album to album. The closest they came to really exciting me since the release of Drums Not Dead was their last full-length LP, Wish You, a record that showed the band making a sudden and hard shift into a really electronic and minimalistic sound. It is easily Liars' bleakest moment on record. With a few exceptions on the track list like the song Bratz, a track that was actually so good just loaded with throbbing electronics, a faster pace in tempo, just a little more upbeat but grimier, just more aggressive. I vaguely remember wishing more songs on this LP sounded like that particular track. And the thing is, Liars do exactly that with Mess. The band does not hold back in a single aspect of this record. They essentially deliver a series of alternative dance tracks on this LP that mix elements of techno, house, ambient music, synthesizer punk, and the end result is glorious! With lots of twisted keyboards delivering sinister melodies or just some really rough, unsettling textures. The songs on this LP, like Liar's previous albums, continue to be fronted by these really unaffected, disembodied vocals that range from just really low lows to really oddball falsettos. And I actually think the deadpan delivery of the vocals matches the instrumentals on this LP quite a bit, because the instrumentals are just so bombastic, they're just so aggressive, to have vocals there that are just really chill and maybe a little eye-widening and weird is a nice touch. And the beats, the rhythms, the grooves on this LP range from monstrous, massive, industrialized nightmares to kind of upbeat, high-tempo, glitchy, and strange dance tracks. There are even a series of songs on this LP that head back into that ambient direction that you remember from Wish You, but with a lot more colors and layers. And like the album Wish You, I think Liars comes through with a record cover that matches the music perfectly. The sounds on Mess don't feel organized in a really kind of clean and succinct way. They are matted. They are grimy. They're wild. They're uncompromisingly colorful. But even though the record is kind of hectic, I think Liar still comes through with some songs that are kind of catchy, like the song Mess on a Mission, which has one of the more lively tempos on the entire LP, Punchy Snare. And the song also features some of the most memorable vocals on the entire LP, especially on the chorus, which just burns like a forest fire, for me anyway. I love the wailing synth leads in the background and the speedy refrain on this thing. A mess on a mission! A mess on a mission! And the song Pro Anti Anti may be one of the more attention-grabbing songs on this entire LP with its kind of chilly, catchy, reverbed organ riff playing at the very start, and then immediately busting in all of these heavy bass synthesizers and this gigantic kick and snare drum. A beat that I could see almost rocking on a Nine Inch Nails record, except uh, way heavier. I love the eerie, the eerie falsetto ba ba background vocals, I love the lead vocals, which are fantastic, and sound like this. And the very last verse on this track as well just brings up all this imagery of like a, a robot army marching in to dominate the human race. And then there are tracks on this LP that I wouldn't necessarily say are catchy, but function more on just creating a really 
enthralling sound set and an irresistible groove that I can kind of just get lost in. Then, then, like the opening track on here, Mask Maker, which has all these bubbling synthesizer arpeggios, keeping a really tight pace. And there are some pretty weird vocal samples playing throughout this track too, like "Eat My Face." But their placement into the song seems so much like. I don't know, just like electric body music from the 80s or something like that. And this song actually transitions into the song immediately after Vox Tune D.E.D., making these two tracks feel like one long continuous track since they kind of keep up the same momentum. Although this song does to me, is as fantastic as it is with its groove and its synthesizer layers, it, it does expose kind of an issue on the record, and that is the vocals. Though I think they're eerie, eerie delivery is 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 really good a lot of the time occasionally i feel like they're they're a bit of an afterthought on this record whether it's with the lyrics like the people tell me why or with so many songs on this record just featuring elongated moans or on the song can't hear well which is a bit of an intermission a pretty slow burner that is kind of short thrown into the middle of the lp i like the synth line on this thing the the patience that it requires to really enjoy it but the vocals on top of it just sound like I'm cupping a microphone with my hands under doing a cartoony voice. To me, the vocal delivery on this track is a bit of a stretch. But if vocals are an issue for you on this LP, the band actually goes without them on the song Dark Slide, which is a bustling, busy piece of electronic music. Very dense. And the way the song progresses, it doesn't really make a, a huge, significant change in the midst of its runtime or anything like that. It just progressively gets noisier and noisier and noisier. I wish there was a bit more change across this track, though. It feels more like a motif than anything. But the last third of this LP is really where Liars makes the creepy kick in. The song Boyzone grabs an international groove and then throws some moaning vocals on top of it with a set of incredibly unsettling dissonant synthesizers, both high and low, and it creates one of the weirdest spots on the entire album. And there's the two closing tracks on here, too, like Perpetual Village, the longest song here at nine minutes long. There's some pretty minimal atmospheric beats on this thing, the falsetto vocals return. It's, again, odd. It's unsettling. It's just so out there. And yet the production seems so close. The groove seems so close to something like Nicholas Jar could have made. And then the closing track on this thing is a bit of an ambient ballad, which... I love the really pretty melodies playing in the background of this thing, but it's met with this wailing, buzzing synthesizer that's so just bull. And I mean bull in a good way. Because I love how this record is just so, <laughs> just so twisted, again, twisted throughout. Oh man, is it sick. This record is one sick puppy. And even though that is kind of a constant thread, I do think that the songs here do a great job of transitioning from one vibe, one feel at the start of the record, a more aggressive feel, to something much more relaxed at the finish. I really love the flow of this album. I love the grooves, I love the vibe, I love the sounds on this record. I think the way liars treat, create, and manipulate sound is so great. To me, in no way has Liars half-heartedly transitioned into electronic music. This record really is a true blue blend of techno, house, and some kind of undefinable third element that can only be described as Liars. Because even in a different genre entirely, the band's appreciation for eerie atmospheres and sound manipulation, dissonant tones, and strange-ass vocals still rings true. There are a few underwhelming songs along for the ride on this thing, but I was massively impressed by what the band had to deliver on Mess. I'm feeling a strong 8 to a light 9 on this thing. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it, y'all. That's it. Anthony Fantano, liars forever.